Okay, and we're recording, and the audio is currently, you know, existing. So let's get started. Welcome to another hashtag How I Safari review. If you would like to purchase this or any Safari LTD figure, you can do so at safariltd.com or at amazon.com slash safariltd. I didn't even plan to do the plug at the beginning, but I just did it. Uh, we're reviewing the Allosaurus from last year. I've had this figure for way too long, so we're finally going to talk about it. Anyhow, first point, the colors. The colors on this figure are wonderful. Great use of white, sort of starting down on the underside and flooding up on the sides of the tail and the flanks. Some people don't like that the white goes over the shoulder. Yeah, it is a little weird. There's something about it that's like kind of unnatural, the way it cuts off the black and green. Uh, I don't see why that couldn't occur in an animal's coloration, but I, I see what people mean. There's something weird about that. Uh, it doesn't personally bother me that much, but I, I understand the complaint. A uh, nice shade of green. Uh, unlike some of the early promo photos, the green actually has some nice sort of uh, various tonalities to it. Uh, it has some darker sort of moss green, some warmer yellows in the center of the torso there. Looks really, really nice, some darker greens on the neck. And of course, a great use of black for accenting a little bit of red on the crests. The, a or the black on the, um, the extremities, on the hands and feet, I really like that as well. And in, in general, just the colors are quite eye-catching, fairly striking. And, and what is equally striking and sort of uh, attention-grabbing on this model is indeed the pose. Uh, it's postured, leaning quite far forward, with the tail arcing up behind it. It's, it's, it's dramatic, really. It looks very active, alert, like it's perhaps lunging at prey. And that's cool to see. Not every figure gets a super active pose, and sometimes uh, a stiff or, or sterile, what word am I looking for, sedentary looking pose can kind of ruin what would otherwise be an interesting figure because it just ends up being a little boring or a little lackluster, but, but this one definitely it has a presence to it and it immediately uh, grabs attention even when on a shelf surrounded by tons of other figures. Uh, the one angle that I don't like the pose from, it looks great from the side uh, and it looks cool from this specific angle. This seems like a very random sort of angle to view it from, but this kind of like quarter behind to the right thing. It just it looks nice, something about the way it's sort of carrying itself, the way the weight has been distributed, and the way all the, the limbs are placed. It just looks good. Uh, but it really doesn't look as good directly from the front. I, I don't know if I can even capture it on camera too well, but yeah, you can see it there. It looks like an overweight duck waddling through some mud. Like, the legs are so splayed and the torso is so wide, it just looks derpy. He just looks like he should be walking like... Yeah, like, like a duck. It looks like he's waddling. It's kind of as simple as that. And uh, regardless of the aesthetic issue I take with that particular angle that you can view the pose from, like I think it looks silly, but regardless of that, there's also some unfortunate anatomical uh, implications. For one, uh, the legs are bowed really far out and the feet are really widely spaced. Theropods walked like every other biped. It's one foot in front of the other, not keep your feet widely spaced and roughly equidistant. Um, it, yeah, I get for stability that that sort of had to be a sacrifice, so at least that has, you know, an excuse. Uh, what doesn't have as much of an excuse is our first concrete accuracy issue. I just tried to snap. That was marginally better. Anyhow, our first concrete accuracy issue is the fact that the torso and the shoulders specifically are really wide. Uh, this is more of the like barrel shaped torso you would expect from like a tyrannosaur. Carnosaurs typically have more of like a, a vertical oval uh, uh, in terms of cross section. Uh, and in order to achieve this sort of shaping on an Allosaurus torso, the degree to which you would have to splay the shoulder blades is just a little far. Um, so yeah, that that's unfortunate. And in, in general, the wide torso is the only concrete sort of like issue in terms of things being too wide or too bulky, but the figure overall is quite bulky, and I would like to address that. I don't view this as a concrete issue, but compared to your typical Allosaurus reconstructions, this one is definitely robust. Uh, I think it's still within the realm of possibility, but it's definitely a very well-fed, 
very muscular Allosaurus. Some people have said that this figure would work better as like uh, an A Maximus instead of an A Fragilis, and I, I think I would agree with that sentiment. Uh, another accuracy thing has to do with the head. There's a lot of small things with the head and the head shaping and like the specific details and contours of the skull. I'm not going to get into too much of that. The only real thing I can remember uh, concrete and, and specific from the sort of list of, of skull related problems is that some people have, have said that the, the post orbital uh, ridge in front of the eye there coming down from the crest uh, really should not be as curved as it is it should be more of just a straight line down and you know some skulls I see definitely it's more of a straight line some of them it does indeed curve as far as I can tell probably not as much as this this curves like all the way under the eye does it how what does it look like on the other side uh, not quite as extreme on this side actually uh, so not necessarily a concrete issue but probably not the right choice for that one little detail it's interesting, doing research for Allosaurus, if there's one thing I discovered looking at lots of Allosaurus skulls in preparation for this video, it was that Allosaurus was really polymorphic, and it's, it's, it's tricky because it, it's difficult to discern what is legitimate phenotypic polymorphism and what is just, like, preservational variation and distortions based on outdated reconstruction methods and things like that. So determining what is legitimate variation and what isn't uh, is tricky, but overall I'd, I'd say the skull on this looks really good. It's identifiably Allosaurus. There's probably some things to nitpick. The post-orbital ridge is just the thing that stood out the most to me. Uh, let's see, the, the claws on the first finger should be larger than the others. They say this is for safety reasons, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna criticize a little because I understand that claws have to be blunted for safety. I don't understand why one can't be bigger than the others, like the toe claws are bigger. Anyway, my, <laughs> minor confusion, minor gripe. Um, as far as other accuracy stuff is concerned, I think that's mostly it. There's some other little proportional stuff, like I think... The head is a tad big, the neck is a tad short. Part of it is just that the, the rather extreme S-curve of Allosaurus's neck is not super well captured here. They probably could have made the posture a little more iconically like S-shaped just because it seems like that's how the vertebrae probably would have been held most of the time in life. Um, this is a little bit more of a soft S. Um, but yeah, there, there's probably some other small stuff I'm forgetting. People have found a lot of little issues on this figure, but overall it does really good with anatomical stuff. It's not perfect, but it's, it's a really good reconstruction of Allosaurus for the most part. And the fact that it's so robust and so sort of heavily built, you know, controversial, yes, but for me it, it brings it into a modern era that is defiant to shrink wrapping, and that's, that's a cool sort of p pro plus... Both of those are synonyms. It really doesn't matter which one I said. I could have just said one. Anyhow, uh, final notes. The detail is really well done. Oh, another little accuracy thing. Lips. Uh, personally, as long as you don't put li lips straight up on a dehorneri, as far as I'm concerned, you can you can put lips on pretty much any theropod besides that, and I'll be like okay with it. I'll also be okay if you don't put lips on there. I'm just sort of neutral on it at this point. Um, and. Concerning the lips, uh, regarding detail specifically, the teeth are really well painted and sculpted despite being partially obscured by the lips. That's why detail reminded me to talk about that because that's sort of an impressive point of detail in this figure in my opinion. Like the teeth could have easily been really messed up because it's hard to sculpt teeth in a mouth with lips, uh, but uh, they did a good job. Uh, the eyes are well painted and have a nice subtle gloss, a good expressiveness. Yeah, you can see that there. And the overall just texture of the figure is really good. Very nice, well done scalation. The scales are not completely consistent. There's some slightly muddled areas, but uh, for the most part, they're very small, very crisp, and look good. Uh, in terms of musculature and folding skin and those sorts of like more noticeable, larger details, it's really well done. Like the little skin along his stomach here, I love that. Uh, there's some stretching skin and kind of wrinkly bits down in here that look cool. And in fact, you can even see some sort of indications of which muscles are flexing and which ones are more relaxed, and that's that's really cool fine detailing. Uh, a final note, and it's a bad one. I'm sorry, Safari. Uh, <laughs> it's not a big deal simply because this is the only figure I've ever seen this, ish this issue on, and I wouldn't let this sway you if you're like questioning whether or not to get this, because I think the chances of you ending up with a figure like this are really, really low. But, unfortunately, I did end up with a figure that has a horrible alignment error on the tail pattern on that side. You can see how it's supposed to look. You can see how it is supposed to look. The black is a perfect pinstriping separating the white and the green. And on this one, it looks like a misplaced stencil. That 
would be my guess as to what got fouled up during the painting process. Unfortunate, yes, but again, I'm not too chuffed about it because it just seems like a really rare problem. I, I can't really remember another Safari figure I've ever gotten that has a quality control issue this major, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Finally, we have size comparisons. I shall not forget size comparisons today. Uh, we're going to bring out the Safari U-Tyrannus, and also a figure that no one else has at the time of recording this, possibly at the time of uploading this as well, the 2020 Safari Chionsaurus. So I don't know why I brought out a figure that no one has for size comparison. I, I guess I'm just showing it off. I'm sorry, I'll get rid of that. Uh, we'll do a review of that soon. I think we're going to do the Edmontosaurus next, the 2020 Edmontosaurus, then the Chionsau, and then the Pachycephalosaurus. Um, so anyhow, that is about it for this video. Again, all the plugs I mentioned at the beginning, I'll just reiterate them here. SafariLTD.com, Amazon.com slash SafariLTD. I highly recommend this one. I'm going to be giving it a solid 9 out of 10. It's definitely not a 10. I don't have the heart to bring it down to an 8.5 though, because it looks really nice just from like a straight up side angle, the colors, the pose. It's just very attractive. And even though it has problems, it's still a really well done modern inter interpretation, excuse me, of a very iconic genus. So great to see, good addition to the collection, and uh, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.